In this lesson, we're going to discuss the precipitation rate. Now, the precipitation rate is the measurement of the water that's leaving the head. And I think it's a very important concept for us to get and internalize because this is going to affect all of your decisions on what sprinkler head you're going to install, what nozzle you're going to put into that sprinkler, and also how you're going to install the sprinklers, how far apart they're going to be, and in what relation to each other because generally a sprinkler system that's well done is not just one head in one area, it's interlocking heads that cover each area uh, because there's just you know certain deficiencies in the way that sprinklers spray out. It's not even from start to finish, so we interlock these heads and that's what we're getting to here is an understanding of the rate of the water that's coming out of the head. And that's the definition of this. It is the rate or the speed that water is being applied to a landscape. And that's basically the, the definition of a precipitation rate, and that's the gross precipitation rate. That's our measurement of the water that's leaving the head. Okay, so the, the measurement that we're doing is a, a volume in a time. So since we're an American, we use American Standard, you know, the imperial system and so forth. That is measured in inches per hour. So let's put this into context. When you're watching a weather forecast and the weather person comes out and tells you that they're predicting a rainfall of, say, a one inch in an hour, you can kind of see that and see how much rain that is. One inch of rain in an hour is actually a moderately heavy downpour. And once we get into looking at the intake rates of different soils, you'll see an inch of, of water per hour. Most soils can't take that. Most soils can't intake that amount of water, so most of it is going to run off into the street or further down the landscape. So uh, that'll kind of put things into perspective. And, you know, there's this kind of general, you know, rule there that you'll be wanting to put an inch of water per week on your landscape with your irrigation system. Now, that's pretty much wrong. I mean, maybe it's right for two times of the year, maybe once in the spring and then once in the fall, but your general water needs aren't the same from one month to the next. I mean, your water needs in the summer, when the temperature is the highest, evaporation is high, is 10 times the amount of the water that your landscape needs in the winter when the temperatures are low, evaporation is low, transpiration is low. So these are going to be very important things there that, that you understand. And when we get into the scheduling of a system, you'll see see how we're going to set this up and maybe one inch per week isn't necessarily what we're looking for all the time, all year long. Now our goal is, is to get an even amount of water on our landscape in that zone. Okay, so we're going to try to use this information to choose the right head and the right nozzle in that head, and then we're going to lay it out in a way that we're trying to get the most uniform or even application of water in this zone. Okay, so we've got some enemies of that, of uniformity and efficiency, and our enemies to our precipitation rate. So far we've been discussing the gross precipitation rate, but let's talk about the net precipitation rate. That's the amount of water that actually reaches the ground and is able to soak down into the roots. So far we've been measuring the amount of water that leaves the head, which is calculatable, but now we're going to talk about how much is actually reaching the ground, and sometimes that's not really calculatable without a full-blown audit. And an audit is where you put cups out at measured intervals, run the system, and then measure the water in each one and see how uniform or how far off they are. And then there's a set of equations you can apply to that. So, but, but that's a complicated process. And um, generally what we're going to do is look at laying out the heads in the best way that we can on the front end to make sure that our net precipitation rate falls into an acceptable range. Now, what are the enemies of our net precipitation rate? It's wind and evaporation. So we have evaporation that happens from the sun, from heat, that you know the water turns into vapor and goes into the atmosphere. And also you have wind that may blow your irrigation water off of its intended target. You want your water to go on this zone, but the wind's blowing particularly hard, so it blows it off, uh, you know, maybe onto the street or onto your neighbor's property or whatever. So really what we're trying to do is attend to the mechanical aspects, and then later on in our series of courses, we'll talk about 
when to schedule your system to run. And in a nutshell, that's in the early morning hours before the sun comes up. That's when the wind is less likely to be blowing, and that's also when the temperatures are going to be the lowest in the entire day. So that reduces the two enemies to our precipitation here, you know, the wind and the evaporation. So uh, hopefully that'll give you some kind of at least preliminary understanding of what precipitation rate is, and then we're going to hone that down into some actual information here.